Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am Frank Benson Jones and I welcome you to Bible study. During this session, I will discuss why Christians should abide in and stay with Jesus. It is very important that we don't deviate from or leave the teaching of our Lord and Savior. During this session, we will use as our foundational scriptures Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 10. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abound therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. And now we will expound upon the verses in Colossians chapter 2. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so ye walk in him. That's telling us that we should never depart from what Jesus has taught us. And we will use scripture to explain scripture. So from Colossians chapter 2 verse 6, we will go to Colossians chapter 1 verse 18. And he is the head of the body, that is Christ, Jesus Christ, uh, the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, the first to be resurrected, that in all things he might have the preeminence. He is first in everything. Jesus Christ is first, and we should stay with him. Colossians chapter 1, verse 23, And if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, where, uh, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Paul is saying, continue to be grounded and rooted in the, in the faith. Don't move away from it, from the hope of going to heaven and living forever in the glory of God. We want to do that, and we don't want to be moved. I shall not be moved. Going to Colossians chapter 2, verse 7 rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abound therein with thanksgiving. Give God thanks for everything. This is what this is telling us. Staying rooted in the faith in Jesus Christ, and established in the faith, and as we have been taught by Jesus and his apostles. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 21, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy and, ho and holy, a holy temple in the Lord. We are his people. We are the pieces of the building that are, are properly joined together, and we are growing into, into being a holy temple in the Lord. We are the temple of, of God here on earth, and we should represent Jesus in everything that we say or do. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22 in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. God has placed the Spirit in us, and, the, and when the Spirit is in us, then God is in us. And we are joined together as the church. We are built together as a habitation, a place for God through the Holy Spirit who indwells all believers. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, because we have love of God and love of our neighbor, Christ is in our hearts through the perfect person of the Holy Spirit, and that we must let him dwell there in us, and in, in us, and we in him. Never leave the Lord Jesus Christ, that ye may be rooted and grounded in love. God is love, and we want to love one another, just as Christ has loved us. And because Christ has loved us, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20, tell us that we should, giving, we should be 
giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to be thankful for everything that God has done for us, for the life, health, and strength that he's given us, for the sound of minds that he's given us, for the salvation, most of all, that he's given us through our Lord Jesus Christ. So give God thanks always for all the good things that he has done for us. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the, the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Let's not let anyone lead us astray. We want to stay with Jesus at all costs. Don't let anything lead us away from Jesus. We go to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3, and to find a description of how people will try to lead us away from the teaching of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If any man teach otherwise, other than what Jesus has taught, and consent not to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according, which is according to godliness, we want to stay with godly teaching and not uh, be led astray by the philosophies and vain deceits of men. First Timothy chapter six verse four refers to that man who tries to teach us otherwise. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envying, strife, railings, any evil surmising. These things are not of God. These things come from men who are in the physical church, but not in the spiritual church, and they want to lead us astray if we allow them. We're going to stay with Jesus no matter what. And 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 5 teaches us what these men who are trying to lead us away from Christ to the traditions and rudiments of the world says, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. They have corrupt minds and they're destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, thinking that the more money you have, the more godly you appear to be. From such, it says, withdraw thyself. Do not stay with them if they're teaching that kind of false doctrine. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 tells us about Jesus. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus has all the attributes, all the attributes of God the Father. He's omnipotent, he's omniscient, omnipresent, infinite, immutable, and eternal. He always has been and he always will be. As it says in John 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And though men may try to, dis try to dispute that Jesus is God in the flesh, in John chapter 10, verse 30, Jesus says it himself, I and my Father are one. They are one in nature. They have the same attributes, the same attributes that I just mentioned, the omnipotence, omniscience, omnipresence, infinite, immutable, and eternal. Uh, that is who Jesus is because he and the Father are one. And because Jesus and the Father are one, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 19, Paul wrote, For it pleased the Father that in him, in Jesus, should all fullness dwell. That is, all the fullness of the Godhead is in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so we stay with Jesus in this dispensation of grace. Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. There is nothing over our Lord Jesus Christ. He's over everything, everyone who's in charge, those who are first in this world, and he's over all the authorities. Uh, there's nothing greater than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Nothing greater and no one greater. He is the, has all the preeminence. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 21 tells us more about Jesus Christ. He is far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come. Jesus Christ is first. So if we want to be with the first, 
We have to stick with Jesus, stay with Jesus, and follow every word that he teaches. Every word, every word of God is true, and Jesus is God. Hallelujah to his name. And because Jesus is first, God has made him first. Ephesians 1 and 22, verse 22 says, and has put all things under his feet. God has done that, has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Jesus Christ is the head of the church and we are the body of the church and we should stick with Jesus and do the work that he has called us to do. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 23 refers back to the 22nd verse where it speaks of the church. Jesus is the head of the church, head over all things to the church, which is now we go to the 23rd verse and it reads, which is his body, the fullness of him that is filled, that filled all in all. We are the body of Christ. We are the fullness of him. We are supposed to be, supposed to be I say again, to do the work that Christ has sent us to do. Stick with Jesus, stay with his doctrine, teach what he taught, do what he tells us to do, and we will end up in God's glory in heaven. May God bless and keep you. In Jesus' name is my prayer. Amen.